Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we came to the Water Shrine and made our way to the top couple of floors, where we picked up a lot of really amazing treasure along the way. There was some pretty good armor, and there was also a couple weapons with some pretty good abilities with them. So, in this episode, we're gonna go to the bottom of the Water Shrine and take on the Kraken, and hopefully bring light back to the third orb. Now to get there, we want to go to the top left of this map, and there should be a staircase waiting for us. So let's go do that. There's a couple of treasure chests to pick up along the way. Unfortunately, most of it is gold, so really, bulk of the treasure that you want to get is in the top couple floors. But I'll be showing you where those treasure chests are as well. Uh, this room here doesn't have anything in it, so just continue onwards. This floor doesn't have any treasure at all, so you can just kind of skip it and go straight to the staircase. In order to do that, we're going to go to the left and then up a little bit. Now, I'm not sure if I'm the only one who thinks this, but a lot of times a video game will have a smell associated with it, usually something that I smelled when I first saw the game. Now, since I saw this game first in my friend's basement when his dad was playing it, I always remember the smell of mothballs when I'm playing this game, and vice versa. If I ever smell mothballs, I think of Final Fantasy, because they had two couches that really smelled like mothballs. And I know there's other games that have other smells associated too, but usually I don't think of it until I have that smell and then I just think of the game. I'm probably the only one that thinks that and I'm really weird, but maybe if you guys do, post a comment of what smell reminds you of what game. Uh, for this floor here, it's really quick, really small. I don't think there's no, there's nothing in there, so just skip it. And here we have some treasure. Unfortunately, like I said, mostly gold, not even a lot of gold. It's kind of weird that they put on so many chests in the later dungeons with pretty much nothing in it. Might as well just be an empty chest. And there's the staircase, so these levels aren't really that long, but we're going back and forth between them, so that's why there's actually more than the three that's actually outlined on a map somewhere. Uh, here we do have some treasure to pick up, first of which we're going to go down to this room here. Hopefully it'll be something worthwhile. I think there's one more item we're supposed to pick up along the way that's decent. Uh, here we have some gold, and here we have some more gold. Okay, so that's not the chest I'm thinking of. Next up, let's go over here. There should be another room. Hopefully I'm not making this up. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Sometimes I, I wonder if my memory is going away. But we have some gold. Here we have nothing, but if we look in the chest, we have 385 gold. Uh, now, the third chest there, you're going to have to do a fixed encounter uh, if you go from the bottom or from the right. They're different encounters, and I think the safer pick is to go from the right. I think the, the bottom one has like cockatrices and good stuff like that, so I'm just going to stick to the right. And I was wrong. Stepping here is actually the one with the cockatrices. There's also Perilisk, which is like the, uh, the upgraded version of cockatrices. Uh, just as weak, but they also like to stone you. But for defeating them, we get a power gauntlet, which is... It's, it's good in the remakes of the game, just because when you use it, it casts Saber on yourself, so it boosts your attack power. In this version, it's not as useful, so I'll probably sell it. And here we have one chest, is it guarded? Yes it is, but only by a gray shark, so nothing to worry about. And here we find another light axe, which is pretty useful. I'm gonna keep it on paper, that way if we come across lots of undead creatures, he can use harm too. And now we can make our way to the staircase. At least I don't think there's any more treasure here. Did I go in there yet? Maybe not. Let's check it out. And here we have a new enemy. This is probably the most dangerous enemy down here, you wouldn't think it, but ghosts are really, really strong in that they have a really powerful physical attack. They can do like 130 damage plus to your fighter, or uh, rather your knight. So if they hit one of your mages, they can probably take him out in one shot. So definitely, actually, you know what? Let's be smart about this. Now that I have all these fancy items, let's use the light axe, use the light axe. Um, use fire two and use the Zeus gauntlet. Or I probably should have used uh, the mage staff to get fire two off. But yeah, a go all out on these guys just because the damage they do definitely piles up. And luckily they missed there. 59 on paper, so not as much as I was saying, but still, I was probably on the low end. Have you come across more than three? Uh, pray. <laughs> 
And 65, nice. So yeah, the light axes are really good because you can hit multiple targets. And ooh, paper gains a level, very nice. And let's see... Uh, nope, I was not in here. Okay, so there is some good treasure. We get some gold. We have... The ribbon! Yes, that's the one I was looking for. I knew there was something important down here. I'm gonna give the ribbon to... I think Lexa, just because you want to keep your mages as protected as possible. I'm just gonna drop the cap, it's not worth even selling at this point. Uh, here we have some gold, and another fixed encounter with some gray sharks, and gold, okay. Not too bad. And I didn't realize this, but two gray sharks gives you like a thousand experience points, so this place isn't a bad area to level up, just because the enemies are pretty weak and they're given good rewards. But we're pretty much done for this floor, so let's head to the staircase. And we're almost at the Fiend already, so this is going to be a pretty quick episode. Well, it has the potential to be a quick episode. It really depends on how the boss battle goes. Uh, here... Where do we go? Can we go left? I think I might be lost. I think this is the way we're supposed to go. And then we go up. There's nothing in that room there. Skip this room and head left. And, yep, okay, good, I'm not lost at all. Nice giant room with rooms within a room. It's almost like Roomception. But it's kind of amazing that you can remember quite vividly certain games when you're a kid. Like, I played this game to death when I was younger, so I, I remember a lot of the dungeons really well. And even though sometimes I doubt myself, I just kind of let my, my fingers push the buttons and they lead me to the right area. Which is a really good thing. If any of you out there are thinking about becoming Let's Players, pick games that you're really, really familiar with it makes it a lot easier to kind of commentate on and to play. And so you don't always have to go back and forth looking up guides and being confused. And I think we're there. Yeah, this looks like it. Yep, there's the orb. Okay, I'm gonna heal up really quick and then we'll take on the Kraken. Alright, now that I'm back, let's take on the Kraken. The Fiend's Ball shatters, yep, we know that. And out pops the Kraken, the Fiend of Water. Now this thing looks pretty scary. It has 800 hit points. It has eight arms, so it can hit you eight times, and it's not actually that difficult. What you want to do, you want to attack with your two melee characters, uh, cast fast on your two melee characters, and I guess I could use the Zeus Gauntlet. It is weak to lightning, so it should do some damage. 46, eh, that's not too bad. Uh, most of the time, Kraken likes to use this ability called Ink, which causes darkness on your characters. Uh, if it does that, feel happy because pretty much it's a useless attack. Uh, it does do some pretty decent physical damage, and I think it does one other spell as well. Can't remember it off the top of my head. But it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Holy frick! Of course, as I say, it's easy. It takes out hope in one shot. Well, things got a lot uh, more interesting, to say the least. Uh, hopefully we can kill it before it kills anyone else, because really, I don't have any means of healing except for Lexa. But really, Lexa could get taken out in one hit too. I do have one lightning three, so let's use that. And paper is like taking that like a tank. And how much this does? 159, there we go. Okay. We lost hope in the process, but we managed to defeat the Kraken. Pretty good experience points and some pretty good gold as well. And for defeating the Kraken, let's uh, bring light back to the orb. And I was kind of hesitant there. I thought I was going to come across a random encounter again, but... Fortunately, the game listened to me. So now that we're done here, we can just step outside and we're back at on rack. So in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, we're going to take the slab to uh, Dr. Une and figure out what we're supposed to do next. Until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks. <laughs>